Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Enthusiastic basketball fans from all over descended upon the Sprint Center for the annual Big 12 tournament last week to support their favorite team and participate in fan zone activities in the Power and Light District. I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing better than this, man. This is it. I guarantee you, all the fans, all the people out here. Just, How often do you come to Kansas City? Every year. Every year for this thing right here. You just can't, no better atmosphere anywhere I've ever been. It's absolutely outstanding. Outstanding. Well, on behalf of Mayor James and the members of the City Council, I'd like to welcome all of our visitors to Kansas City, Missouri for the Big 12 Tournament. It, this is a tremendous civic event. We uh, couldn't be happier to have everybody in town. Obviously, it's got a significant economic impact, about nine to ten million dollars for the weekend. So it's good for business, but it's also good for the community's soul. It's been around for a long time. We do it well. We do it better than any city in the country. Uh, celebrating what we think is a rite of spring and no better place on the planet than the Big 12 Tournament Kansas City every March. The city has received national recognition for being included in the EPA's list of cities with the most Energy Star certified buildings. 82 of these buildings with approximately 20 million square feet of floor space are located within the city. Together, these buildings save more than $14 million in energy costs annually, which is equivalent to the annual electric use of nearly 23,000 homes. For more information, visit energystar.gov slash top cities. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Our parks and facilities offer a wide variety of events and programs for you and your family to enjoy this spring. For example, come out to Bartle Hall on March 22nd through 24th for the 2013 Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show. Residents interested in sprucing up their home or yard this spring are guaranteed to find many clever decorating, design, and remodeling ideas at this Kansas City tradition. The Flower Lawn and Garden Show is sponsored by Parks and Rec and will also include an entertainment stage, children's art activities, and information about our programs and the city's KC Green initiative. To learn more, visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800. The 23rd Annual Blue River Rescue is Saturday, April 6th from 8 a.m. to noon at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. This is Missouri's largest one-day cleanup project and requires help from volunteers. Residents are invited to get a group together to help beautify the Blue River by planting trees, picking up trash, and checking the quality of the river water. Refreshments will be served and all volunteers will receive a t-shirt and gloves. Visit lakesidenaturecenter.org for more information. A holiday unique to Kansas City, Fountain Day, will be celebrated on Tuesday, April 9th at 11 a.m. On this day, all Kansas City fountains will turn on for the season. This year's Fountain Day festivities will take place at The Children's Fountain, located at the intersection of North Oak Trafficway and Missouri Route 9. The Children's Fountain was dedicated in 1995 and features six dancing, playful bronzed boys and girls crafted by Kansas City sculptor Tom Corbin. It is one of 48 publicly owned fountains maintained and operated by Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Check out our facilities, amenities, and programs for free on April 13th and 14th during KC Parks Community Center Spring Open Houses. On Saturday, eight community centers will showcase their spring and summer programming options from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., while Lion Creek Community Center will offer free open ice skating from 2 to 4 p.m. 
On Sunday, KC North, Southeast, Tony Aguirre, and Hillcrest Community Centers will open from noon to 6 p.m. Free open ice skating at Line Creek will take place from 12.20 to 2.20 p.m. For more information about these and other parks and recreation events and activities, visit kcmo.org parks and click on the events calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513-7500. My name is Michael Shaw. I'm the manager of Solid Waste for the City of Kansas City. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, we have some exciting news to, um, for the citizens of Kansas City, particularly our Northland residents. Um, today, we will be officially opening or dedicating this facility here at Cookingham in North Main as a leaf and brush drop-off site for our Northland residents. It will officially be opened uh, next Saturday, March 23rd and residents can enjoy the free leaf and brush drop-off all across the city uh, here in the Northland like everyone does else across the city. Thank you all for being here and uh, we appreciate the support from our partners on this facility. Um, the city has three leaves and brush drop-off sites managed by Missouri Organic Recycling and we appreciate that uh, partnership. Our North Shoto site and our North Main uh, site are open Monday through Saturday from 8 to 6 and are free to our uh, Kansas City residents uh, Monday through Friday. The Emerald Ash Board, if you don't know what that is, you should go online and look that up and understand that for your own personal property. But that the waste for the Emerald Ash Board will only be accepted at, here at this North Main site. Residents can receive the uh, free ground mulch um, from the, the drop-off sites, uh, which is timely for this time of year as you're preparing your yard to utilize and uh, continue that cycle of life that the city's helping you participate as a resident. Somewhere to drop it off, we mulch it up, you get to come back, pick that up, and use that um, as ground cover for your own yard. Uh, Northlanders take great pride in the appearance of their community and their yards and homes, and this addition is very welcomed and needed. I want to thank all of those who have worked so hard to get this ready so quickly that the fact that we're going to have this open by next Saturday, especially with the uh, positive change in weather, is great. So thank you all very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today and to celebrate, I, I think, a, a quick uh, response from the city. We recognized a problem that was going to potentially disenfranchise over 100,000 of our residents. Uh, through some creative work, they took a half million dollar project, reduced the cost to less than $150,000, and were able to use resources that they already had available. So for example, we're standing on the remnants of Shoto, uh, Shoto Parkway. It was milled up and brought up here, and behind us we will be adding the remnants of uh, North Brighton as that road construction begins. So again, a creative, adaptive reuse of scarce resources, both financial and other resources that the city can then apply in a creative, sustainable solution to a problem that affects a lot of us. So again, I want to thank the hard work of the, of the staff, their creative energy, the willingness of the city council to make investments to get this thing done in, in a quick basis, our partners who have been a key component of this service delivery going forward, and our residents as we tackle this issue for the next decade. We're going to hear Emerald Ash Borer talked about a lot for the next 10 years in this city. We have 20,000 ash trees that are, are on public property, the street trees, we have 20,000 trees, and there's an estimate there may be as many as 400,000 ash trees within the city limits. So we have, a, 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 it's going to be a big issue, it's going to take a lot of energy and focus from the city over the next decade as we work through this issue. Again, I want to thank everybody involved, this was a tremendous success, one of many in the city, we need to celebrate it, and we'll keep up the good work, but eventually, March 23rd, bring your leaf and brush to on uh, North Main and Cookingham. Thank you very much. Every year, many people try to quit smoking. Unfortunately, most have to try multiple times before they finally succeed. 
Smoking is a very difficult habit to break, but you don't have to do it alone. The Health Department's Tobacco Use Prevention Program has information on many state and local resources that can help you. There are a lot of resources available to someone who's thinking about quitting smoking. Um, you can call us here at the Health Department at 816-513-6211 and we have a great packet of information that includes workbooks and also a list of all the classes that are available in the Kansas City area. Um, another great place to call first is the Missouri Quit Line and that is 1-800-QUIT-NOW. They have a lot of information for anybody that lives in the state of Missouri and they will transfer you if you live in Kansas or another state to their quit line. You can also look on cleanairkc.com. They have a lot of resources um, for smoking cessation classes and we have a great new resource at KU Medical Center. It's Nicotine Anonymous and those are free classes. To learn more about these and other tobacco cessation resources, again, you can call the Health Department at 816-513-6211 or visit our website, www.kcmo.org health. A question we often get when attending community meetings is what can I do about my neighbor that I know is dealing drugs out of his house? Of course you can report it to any patrol station, but don't forget the TIPS hotline is always available. Once the call is made, citizens often expect to see an officer pulling up to the suspect's house moments later. We thought we would give you a window of how the process works. We begin with Officer Kevin Bame at Crime Stoppers. We would take that information, we put it in the form of a, a report that is then forwarded on to the particular investigative agency that's handling that crime, in this case the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department's Narcotics Unit. Any information that's received to the TIPS hotline would be eligible for a cash reward up to $1,000 uh, depending on where the arrest is made and uh, the circumstances involving that arrest. Once the call is forwarded to KCPD, it is immediately sent to the appropriate unit. Sergeant Renee Reyes explains. Well, once we receive a complaint or a TIPS hotline call, those uh, complaints are reviewed and then forwarded to the applicable squad. If someone calls in a complaint, we ask that person if they would like to leave their name or if they would like it to be anonymous. We do not require anybody to leave their name. It's only if they want to be contacted with uh, the outcome of the situation, then we by all means will recontact them. Whenever it's assigned to the detective, they don't just use that phone call. They'll go and um, do surveillance on the location, contact other neighbors in the area, contact the officers that work the area to see if there's actually that kind of activity in the area or at that location. And then we also use other intelligence databases to confirm who's living there, what kind of activity they have, and other several other means before we actually just act on it. A lot of times we do get phone calls at the unit, people wanting to know about complaints that they've made and saying that they don't see any police activity. What I try to explain to them is the majority of the stuff that the, my unit, the street crimes unit, or the drug enforcement unit do it, are things that you would not detect. A normal citizen would not detect the police activity. Um, every single complaint is worked on. A lot of times we'll get complaints from several different people on the same location. They're all compiled together. We're constantly checking the databases on complaints that keep recurring, that, um, that specify a lot of violent activity. We try to target those immediately. Um, we get, I would say, hundreds of complaints a day, and so those are always, like I said, sorted out and sent on to the detectives that are applicable to that situation. I always encourage people to call in and make complaints when they see activity or situations. It doesn't necessarily have to be drug activity. It could be any kind of criminal activity call it in to Crime Stoppers, call it in to TIPS, um, call your local station, uh, police station, and let them know that there's, because any station can take complaints, and it can be any time of criminal activity. Call it in, let us know, and we will absolutely act on that right away. If you call a station, officers can, depending on the type of criminal activity you see, they could respond right there at the moment, at that moment. Um, depending on the, like I said, on the criminal activity, it may take, you know, a couple of days for it to get forwarded to us, to the drug units or to the gun units, but we'll get that information and we will act on it. Everyone has the right to live in a safe environment. For the sake of you, your family, and your other neighbors, don't let illegal drug activities destroy your neighborhood. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. 
Looking ahead, the city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 1st for residents in the city's central zone. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on their regularly designated trash pickup day. Collection for residents in the south zone will be the week of April 8th and pickup for residents in the north zone will be the week of April 15th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org slash trash. The city will celebrate the year of its 160th birthday on Thursday, March 28th from 1145 to 1230 p.m. in the City Hall Rotunda. The celebration is open to the general public and cake and refreshments will be served. This event will celebrate Kansas City's history and especially its milestone year of 1853 when the state of Missouri officially recognized the city of Kansas. Wage-earning residents have until Monday, April 15th to file their 2012 earnings tax returns and pay any tax due. This deadline also applies to the profit earnings tax for businesses on a calendar year accounting cycle. Wage earners may use the city's free online system, which can be accessed at kcmo.org wage. Although the Revenue Division has mailed a postcard to residents with instructions on using the online system, taxpayers who prefer to mail in tax returns can download forms online at kcmo.org finance or call the Revenue Division at 816-513-1120. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.